Nile FM's Aladdin, Episode 2. The sun sleeps and the moon is high in the sky in the magical city of Cairo. But deep in the city dungeons, a poor gutter rat called Aladdin. I swear it's Ele Eddin. Wallahi, I'm a woman. Whatever. Our main character and her monkey friend rot in prison at the hands of the evil Jennifer. I know, Abu. This is pretty bad. I didn't know the man I nearly ran over in my tuk-tuk was Prince Yassin. Yes, I know he almost wrecked my ride, but there's just something so magnetic about him. Something so omnidib. No, it wasn't the sweater. Oh well. I guess that's that anyway. He'll be looking to marry a duchess and I'm just a talentless nobody. Sort of like Paris Hilton. Suddenly, a voice from the corner of the cell began to speak. What if I told you that I have a way for you to get your basbusa and eat it too? <coughs> Quiet down, Abu! Who are you? What do you want? Do you have basbusa? I don't have basbusa, but I can provide you with a way for you to have as much basbusa as your heart desires and more. I'm listening. You've heard of the legend of Ali Baba and his 40 thieves? No. Well, you should familiarize yourself with it sometime. It's part of your heritage. Anyway, I have news for you. There is a way for you to have all the things that your heart desires. Riches, food, love. Food, power, and... Food? No! Glory! And food. Yalla, Bina. But what can I do from in here? I'm locked up in prison. If you follow me, I know how to get you there. But you have to do something for me, too. Do we have an agreement? Yes. Eshta, follow me. Aladdin and Abu naively followed the decrepit old woman and true to her word, she did lead them to freedom. And two metro stations, one microbus and one camel ride later, they found themselves in the desert with this old woman staring at a sand dune. Shh, Abu. We're not sure that she's crazy yet. <laughs> okay, maybe a little crazy. Here we are. We are here at this place we have arrived. Here. Okay, and where are we? At the entrance of the Cave of Wonders. And don't forget, you have to do something for me. Now listen carefully. When you go inside, you must find and then bring to me the great Fanus. The one I have at home is broken, and I can't afford to buy a new one. You brought me this whole way for a Fanus. Lady, you could have just gone to Whistel Ballad. No! <laughs> I mean... No, dear. It has to be that Venus. My heart is set on it. You don't want to break an old woman's heart, do you? Well, where do I go? At the moment, we're just standing in front of a sand dune. You just leave that to me. Open sesame! And as if from nowhere, there it appeared. A large doorway opened up in the sand dune, and in Aladdin went with Abu. And they were swallowed up by the portal never to be seen again. Just kidding. They found themselves in a room so full of things their minds could not comprehend. True to her word, creepy as she was, the old woman did not lie. There before them lay all the riches that could be imagined, and food. Lots of food, especially Mahashi. And hanging from the ceiling in all its glory, there it unmistakably was, the Great Fanus. Wow, Abu, would you look at that? I think that must be the smallest Fanus in the world. Look at it. Why on earth would anyone want that? And it's so dirty. Let me give it a clean. Aladdin began to rub, but what Aladdin didn't know was that this would be the moment of his, I mean her, life. The moment her life would change forever. Hey, I'm a genie. What the? So our hero has found herself in yet another pickle. But who is this mystery genie? And will he return the fanoose to the strange old lady? Find out in the next exciting episode of Aladdin. <laughs>